What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jem Min. I just got done reading the Deadpool Minibus Volume 1. It's got a ton of great mini series, so we're going to go over it with some overhead shots and then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. Let's get into it. All right, so this was the first omnibus to come out from this minibus series and I don't remember if they did a direct market variant or just one dust jacket. Not really a fan of this dust jacket. I think they should have went with the Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe uh, issue number one. But a uh, whole Omni written by Cullen Bunn. And then you have the artist. Here goes the spine. Again, the creators. Little Deadpool on the bottom. You get a little synopsis on the back as well as what it collects. So Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, the four-issue series. Then the four-issue follow-up, Deadpool Kill Illustrated. Then the follow-up to that, Deadpool Kills, Deadpool 1 through 4. Then we get Night of the Living Deadpool 1 through 4. And Deadpool vs. Carnage 1 through 4. This only cost $60 when it first came out. All right, so inside of the dust jacket, Little Wade giving the breakdown of all the different miniseries. It's actually a good synopsis of each one right there on the inside of the dust jacket. Then we get the uh, biography on the creators. The actual hardcover just has that same Deadpool logo, similar spine, and nothing on the back. We got some deep red cover pages. You got Deadpool walking away from the explosion, very action movie-esque then we have the table of contents so as you can see Cullen Bunn doing all uh, series in this Omni then you have the different creators with him jumps into the reason I even wanted to start reading these Deadpool mini bus Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe this was a key issue just for the cover in itself you have the watcher playing the narrator kind of for the first couple of series because these very much act like sequels to each other until you get to like Deadpool and Carnage and such. But essentially what happens here is Deadpool sees a therapist and he kind of gets his third eye awakened, if you will. He already breaks the fourth wall. He already has two different voices in his head narrating himself. But he realizes that he's a comic book and that writers are controlling what he's doing and that they're really slaves to the canon and... He basically just wants out, right? So his way of getting out is killing the entire Marvel Universe. So as he's successful in doing so, which he goes out of his way to point out, creators are letting this happen. Uh, they turn to Taskmaster to try to take him out. So then we're jumping into issue three. But uh, definitely a fun series. I can see them borrowing a lot of aspects from this in the Deadpool 3 movie that's coming out. Uh, you kind of seen glimpses of that with like the Fox universe in the background. So maybe him just getting sick of writers and creators and uh, messing up his canon or constantly putting themselves in these predicaments. It's kind of like what Grant Morrison did with Animal Man back over at uh, DC Vertigo. So I, I definitely dug this. Once we get out of Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe, though, it continues. So once he figures out he can't kill the Marvel Universe. The characters just keep coming back because of the multiverse, because creators keep writing and bringing them back. He realizes he needs to kill the things that inspired superheroes and comic book characters to begin with. So like the great novels, um, the idea verse is what they end up calling it. So he jumps into stories of Moby Dick and other famous novels from in the past, trying to kill those characters uh, to prevent comic book characters from even being born. The jokes are timed well. The puns are on point. It definitely feels like Cullen Bunn understood the Deadpool character. Sherlock Holmes becomes a major point in the story, figuring out what's going on here. The end of this series brings us to a multiversal concept, and that's where Deadpool kills Deadpool comes into play. It's very uh, tropey and one of those kind of the one scenarios where he's going around the universe or the multiverse killing versions of himself until there are no Deadpools left. Uh, another kind of uh, attempt at what he was doing with trying to kill off the Marvel Universe, trying to just get out of this whole existence and killing off every version of Deadpool. It spawns an evil version of Deadpool. So here we go to issue three. You have a Deadpool version of Galactus. So, you know, it's just kind of a fun way to bring different versions of Deadpool throughout the multiverse. So that kind of ends that arc. And when we jump into Deadpool versus Carnage, this is some time later, and this just kind of feels like an out of canon version of that. And it's just exactly what you would expect. What's funny is we ended up getting another version of this or some kind of Deadpool Carnage team up recently. And going back to read this, it felt very familiar to that. So Deadpool ends up fighting Carnage. 
the whole plot here is Deadpool's convincing Carnage that they're not in control, that what he's doing isn't really random, and that even Deadpool can predict him because they're on the same level of crazy. So that kind of whole opening Carnage's third eye up is really what this series is all about. And it's fun because obviously Deadpool has the healing factor. You can't really kill him. He ends up encountering the Life Foundation symbiote. So, so uh, that plays for a fun uh, final act here through that mini series. So although it doesn't feel canon like the uh, first three minis, it was still a fun series. Then we get Night of the Living Deadpool. So this is the last mini series, and it feels like Cullen Bunn's rendition of The Walking Dead. It's even in black and white except for Deadpool. And it's just your typical generic kind of wake up and everybody's zombies. Uh, what I liked about it was the flashback was in color. And then when Deadpool goes zombie, he goes black and white. Now, he actually extended this concept a little further. Like, the zombies can feel and talk, and they understand what they're doing. And they don't want to be doing what they're doing, but they're not in control. So, very cool to see, like, Deadpool go through it as well. Very fun zombie story, which is kind of like a really early black, white, and red type of comic, right? All right, so it looks like we got some scripts in the back and uh, some paneling, some like sketch ideas for the cover. So this is like the four cover sketch mock-up for Deadpool Kills the Marvel Universe. So very cool, more scripts, covers for Illustrated. I always remember seeing this one, the Secret Wars homage. So you get a lot of variants, but you also get a lot of sketch mock-ups of what the covers were before they were even created. So some original inks of these panels. We saw some of this Deadpool Galactus in there, the Watcher. Got some regular variants, some kind of like storyboarding. Symbio Deadpool designs mixed with the Life Foundation stuff. This video is brought to you by that Spider-Man booth.com. The October subscription box is now live for just $50. You get over $100 of retail value in five comic books that store exclusives plus regular variants. You get access to club that Spider-Man booth with the members only store giveaways via the monthly YouTube shows. And of course the exclusive variant limited to this box by our good buddy, Javon Jordan. We have a hail crow king of hell issue. Number one with the Sonic, the hedgehog homage, head on over to that Spider-Man booth.com and sign up for that subscription subscription box today so there we go like i said this is the omnibus that made me want to even start reading the minibus stuff like i did a review of minibus volume zero which was like a prequel and now here we are and i think this one is going to set the bar a little bit too high from the beginning where deadpool kills the marvel universe and it continues through the idea verse then killing all the different versions of deadpool the deadpool carnage stuff it was fun it was a hack and slash uh but it was probably the weakest one out of all four, uh five miniseries and then you have the night of the living deadpool very fun uh, recreation of the walking dead featuring deadpool so i dug this mini bus i'm not really too sure if i'm going to jump into volume two right away or if i'm going to jump into something else just kind of getting my feet wet again getting back into the reading and reviewing so I dug the Minibus Volume 1. Let me know what your thoughts were in the comments down below. I appreciate you watching. Stay minty fresh. Peace.